how do you deal with holding that notion in your head more and more as you age, as you recognize, as you experience actual decline, how do you reckon with it? And the answer that Tom Krause gives us and that America is giving us is, you fucking put the goddamn pedal to the goddamn metal. <laughs> because the American death now, David Foster Wallace and Felix Biederman agree on this, is somebody <laughs> putting, driving headfirst into a concrete pylon in a fucking Lamborghini. That is it. That is the only way to end this is that you just have to take what you are doing that is killing you and do it more. And, th and so that is why every one of these Mission Impossible movies, Cruz is doing a more and more extreme stunt. If yeah. he dies during one of them, he He's will have succeeded. Death. Valhalla. Yes, I, I, one thousand percent. So then why don't they kill him in the movie? I thought that he yeah, that's had the thing, to yes. Because he has to yes. really die. What I'm saying is, like, <laughs> right. okay. the third <laughs> gen, <laughs> where he can't <laughs> die even Not in the Maverick. movie, he cannot accept it. Like, yeah, he does the I'm going to sacrifice myself thing, but then they can't, the narrative can't kill him. He cannot be killed. We cannot accept, we can accept feeling like good people for trying to sacrifice, but we cannot uh, accept having the consequences for that. Like, our narratives can't. Our narratives are built on the opposite. Uh, forward forever, always winning, always victorious, America continuing. We cannot process it. Tom Cruise can't process it. So when he goes to do the noble sacrifice that should be like him coming to terms with decline. Okay, if I'm going to decline, then let my death mean something. He tries to do it. They won't let him. And you get that great scene where they both survive and they're yelling at each other. Like, how did you? Because it's not supposed to happen. There's only supposed to be one person there. That's supposed to be Miles Teller. But he can't do it. Which means that in real life, he is going to have to fall off of like uh, the, the International Space Station or whatever the fuck is going to kill him <laughs> in one of these movies. Like Brad Pitt in Solaris. Burn up on re-entry. Yeah. <laughs> and just like we are going to just collapse into oblivion from within rather than recognize and try to step down from where we are. A, 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 a system that insists, no, we have to have sixth gen fighters. Well, literally every other element of our social structure is dissolving. Like... A, <laughs> like <laughs> Like a goddamn, um, it's dissolving like fucking cotton candy in the first row at uh, SeaWorld. <laughs> even, I mean, even the fifth, fifth gen fighters we don't have work. Fifth gen fighters. But, but we have to have sixth gen. We have to have eighth gen fighters so that we can blow this thing up at once so that we can make an act that we delusionally think is going gonna, is gonna to keep us going that ends up being our uh, our nemesis because we cannot step down we cannot look at the reality of of decline of of time what it really means we can't look inward so we have to just press the accelerator and, and that leaves us in a situation where this movie is supposed to end with the miles teller getting in the f814 and flying home and instead you got this old motherfucker hanging around <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like when he wouldn't well, speak let Jeremy Renner replace him in Mission Impossible. It's the same thing. It's like he he can't step down. He has to go into the wall. Exactly, Cavill. Cavill, you they set up Cavill in that. The, I don't think is it the most recent, the one. Yeah, with the, it's the most recent one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the most, most recent, recent one. Oh, Cavill, Cavill, uh, not Renner. Sorry. They set yeah, him Cavill. up like the same way they brought in Shia LaBeouf for Harrison Ford, and the, but then right. halfway through the movie, actually he's evil. Actually, he has to be destroyed. <laughs> And then, by the way, they're doing another Indiana Jones. Guess what? No Shia LaBeouf. 85,000-year-old Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking about um, just uh, sl slamming, slamming the, your foot down on the accelerator and just going straight into a wall, uh, the, 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 mission, the mission particulars themselves in this movie are like, okay, so like they're attacking um, one of Iran's like, you know, heavily fortified uranium uh, enrichment plants, which is basically at the, at the bottom of like a caldera. You know, but like, but to access, like, to, to to get to the point where they can like drop their laser guided bombs, like, uh, they need to, they, it's it's two sets of two, uh, one to paint the target and the other to drop the bomb, and then the first bomb like opens up the hole, and then the second one uh, blows up the whole motherfucker. It's basically like the Death Star, you know, like there's it, it like is one the exhaust Death Star. It's exactly it's the Death Star. It's a down event. to down to the young pilot who's still learning the ways of the Force. Has oh yes. To bomb it without his tracking device yeah the he has laser to doesn't work the whole thing is the last se sequence of star wars and it's like he's doing the use the force luke thing to him and he says and don't think just do eyes. yeah he says like tom cruise literally says a, a maverick says to rooster he's like you gotta you gotta fly instinctually if you think up there you're dead 
I mean, and like I think at one point don't he literally says, do. "Don't think do." So yeah, he's on on that Yoda tip, but um, but but also crucially to get even get to the caldera where like they they do an inverted thing dot like they do an inverted like arc over the top of the first like the lip of the the rim of the mountain, and then they got to hit the target and then just pull straight up and pull like nine G's for like ten seconds, which like you know. You know, most most pilots, you just black out. Like it's just your your brain just turns off. But before that, they have to fly below five hundred feet, like five hundred feet off the ground <laughs> through a canyon system that like weaves in and out to avoid the the surface the SAM batteries, the SAM missiles. So they got to fly under the missile batteries and do this like all in under under two and a half minutes or something like that. The sand the sand batteries, which for some reason, even though they launch this barrage of tomahawks to take out <laughs> they the, <don't>... <laughs> the air base, they can't fucking shoot, even though they know where the SAMs are. Yes, yes. They can't fucking blast these sand batteries for some reason. I'm trying to think of any explanation that <laughs> maybe because it would like because they're right on the edges of the canyon, right? Y- yeah, they're it, like, right at like, the, the top of the yeah. garbage and like rebel. I don't and they know. Be able to fly in there? <laughs> I doubt <laughs> it. Because <laughs> like if they but, uh, blew them all yeah, up, too much they debris, wouldn't worry yeah. about the canyon, right? They could just go right yeah. in. But um, like uh, like uh, but, but and many times in this movie, like uh, John Hamm comes up to the edge of basically saying this is a suicide mission for anyone who does it. <laughs> and about halfway through the movie. Like he's trying to train all the pilots, like they and they, they they have like a in their nav computer, like they 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 they're practicing doing the run, and like none of them can get it right. So John Hamm's like, okay, we're just gonna give you more time to do this, which just is like the the, the longer it takes, like the like the longer like the the higher your likelihood of just dying doing this, and then like once again against orders, Maverick Mitchell takes a plane out and like does the run in like under two and two minutes, 15 seconds and just shows them all how to do that. And then at that point they're like, Oh, like, I guess you should just fly this mission. Yeah, <laughs> well, that was, that was, I was like, pretty early. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second, <laughs> this is a suicide mission. No one else can fly it other than Pete Maverick Mitchell. But what, what, why even have this thing of like, oh, you have to teach these kids how to do it? Like, they're young. They're at the prime of their life. Tom Cruise, Maverick Mitchell's been trying to die for the last 30 years. He's got no <laughs> wives, no kids. They, 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 they need three other pilots because they need the two packages. They need the yeah. laser because you need a, one to, to paint the target right, with laser and the other to fire twice. the rocket. Yeah. So you need two sets. You need two rockets. They set that up. So you need three fighters. But the fact that he wasn't just at the beginning assumed to be the fucking team leader <laughs> yeah, right. is insane. <laughs> You need to get three guys, not four guys, because the first montage, the first training montage is they just do dog fighting and like, you know, uh, whoever gets uh, he washes uh, well, all of whoever them. gets tone first on the other one uh, wins. And they all have to do like push ups. And it's just this montage of him owning everybody and never getting right. shot down. And it's right. like they're still expecting him to just like, go, oh, all right, good luck, guys. Okay. <laughs> the guy who's clearly superior to all the of castle. you, by far uh, the best player on the team. I'm going to just hang out I, on the bench giving you the thumbs up. I give John Hamm a lot of credit here because he gets the absolute most cliched line in the movie where he's like, Maverick, I don't know whether to drum you out of the Navy or make you the leader of this goddamn yep, mission. Yep. <laughs> and he <laughs> actually manages to pull it off, but it's like, oh my God, that's that's so cringy. Come on. But that's yeah, that that's where it ends with him uh him as the the new leader of the team. Is there a McCain link here with the Maverick? I don't know if McCain was already nicknamed that in the early 80s. He probably was. But he's another Navy flyer who is na- nicknamed Maverick. I've never looked up and able to find anything, but really? there has to be should a have been, link. I don't know right? if he had that reputation. Was that his call I mean, sign or just like, what he started calling himself after he was in Congress? <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't know. It was a Congress thing. I mean, his record as an aviator, he should be fucking he's, Goose. He's poor. <laughs> he should be Goose, not Maverick. Yeah, Kamala Harris has honored it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean he was still in the wake his, of the like. His, uh, uh, what was the banking scandal? Yeah, yeah, Keating, Keating savings and loans. It was a rebranding five, after yeah. the Keating Five thing. Uh, he should have. Oh, yeah, okay. fucking. He should have been Daddy's boy. That should have been his call sign. <laughs> <laughs> Junior. Yeah. Uh, according to uh, one post that I found, uh, <laughs> n- not many sites, but some a pe- few people backing it up. It was Playboy. 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 Nice. I mean, Maverick would have been a good call sign because while you, like, you know, mainstream pilots keep your planes in the air, fucking John McCain <laughs> just crashes them because he doesn't give a shit. He's a fucking They're Maverick. supposed to He's gonna not wreck be on fire. Shit. Yeah. Okay, if that's what the rule book says. Well, uh, 
<laughs> speaking of uh, square. speaking of wrecking airplanes, uh, there's a, it's in this movie, but it's also a big part of the first movie. It's something that always pissed me off. It's like whenever they're reaming out Maverick or something, they're like, they're like, you almost crashed a thirty million dollar airplane. They're like, hey, they're like that plane doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the taxpayers. Think of the taxpayers. <laughs> And whenever I saw that, it always pissed me off because I'm like, yeah, it belongs to the taxpayers. I can't fly a fucking F-18. The guy in the box, it's his goddamn plane. I don't care if he he fucking crashes it or not. He's got the skills. It's the man with the fucking stick in between his legs. That's it. Yeah, and they're also worried about budgets. Like, at at Paris, they're worried about a budget. How much money can they possibly, like, (laughs) moving around money? They give them more money than they ask for every year. Literally every general and admiral says we need less money. They say, please, no more, no more Abrams tanks, please. We're full. Yeah. We literally yeah. have they no. Say one, they say they don't want it. them, haven't they? They said, look, we have too many Abrams tanks. We don't need any more. Stop making them. And they're like, no, there's factories that make them, so you're going to have more Abrams tanks. So they just stuff Always themselves. Ranking officers who say they don't need weapons. So it just made no sense from the very beginning that they had to like cut, shut down the the Mach 10 test program. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like. Like, it would be either or. Like, it's not both. Right. Like, it's drone right. army and this thing that can go into exactly. space. Exactly. 